Hello and welcome to this starter house build guide. Today we're taking a look at this cottage core inspired build which I've built in a plains biome but it would suit most of the forest types as well. Um, let's take a look at the build palette. Today we'll be working with the smooth stone varieties but if you want to put in a patchwork texture you can use the strip birch sand and normal sandstone. We're going to be highlighting our windows with our dark oak varieties and then throwing in just a little bit of this warped stem uh, bits just to offset that dark brown and the light of the smooth stone. We're going to be making a feature wall and we're going to use a color gradient for that one using brick strip stone granite and what's that terracotta and around the windows we'll use the oak types these ones and the put out campfires for some awnings uh, for the roof trim we'll be using the uh, uh, the coppers uh, what is it oxidized no okay these are the oxidized you can use them for highlights I'll mostly be using the weathered one and then in between that we'll be doing a patchwork texture of the the green terracotta green concrete lime terracotta moss and moss carpet. I've put some shapes on the floor just to indicate where our building is. The white is the building itself. The orange is some ideas that I've got for exteriors. Might change that, might not. Let's get some walls up and take a look at that. Walls are up and I have put a few different heights as you can see here. Uh, we'll probably still change that. I don't know where to put second stories yet. I've punched some, oh, there's the front door, but I've punched some windows and given, you know, a bit of a bigger window back door here. One big blank wall, which I've got a plan for, but this, this is our feature wall. And for the gradient for the feature wall, we've done, as I said, the bricks at the bottom, then dripstone, granite and terracotta. I did rows of two and then I've uh, I've gone through and I've kind of patched it up and down a little bit to make it a bit of a blend. Now because this is a highly textured wall I have made it a little bit more patchworky where with a smooth color gradient you would probably go a little bit more blended but just putting the put, putting the patchwork in like that that helps to just distribute the texture a little bit as well as the color and obviously we're just sticking to as you can see uh, bricks down the bottom the terracotta up the top we're sticking to those general colors like that let's put in some windows though all right, here we go. We've put in our window furnishings. And as I said, on this one, we're doing the mostly the oak. And uh, I've, I've used here some uh, the campfires for the awnings. As you can see, just a little bit of a stick out, almost like it's uh, protecting the window from weather coming down. And then supporting that with the, with the what are they called? The fence gates. Um, they are, they're sort of creating a bit. And as you can see, I've got them open so that it, it makes it look like there's a... Um, just a little support there, the shutters, little, uh, little um, window sills going on and buttons to highlight around. Another window design here, and you could always just pop your, uh, put another stair here for a windowsill, but I wanna show you some different options here. I uh, kinda like that being a bit flatter. Um, so yeah, same, 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 but different. Uh, this uh, side entrance here, I've taken away the structure I was gonna put at the side, and I've brought this out just a little bit to give it a little bit more definition, a little bit more character. And again, we've got the campfires up the top here for a bit of an awning. We'll pop some more around here, I think. Oh. Yeah, pop some more around here. Needed that shovel. Uh, put them out just like that. And maybe we'll, uh, let's throw some fences in as well. Just for a little bit of support. That's, uh, is that, yeah, okay, that'll do. That'll do. I'm not too, not, that's not too bad. But as you can see, we're sort of keeping that same theme as what's going on, at, but keeping it a little different. Now, as for this middle section, as and how you can see it's tapering up here, I've got here where we're going to put a chimney in the build. Now it's time for some more character and I've gone and I've spammed vines all over this and that that green has really just made all this gradient pop and the the dark the dark oak the light oak colors pop and you can still see the gradient coming through there but it's softened the tones a bit so we can still see our bricks and our dripstone and our granite and everything but it's softened those tones up and it's given a little bit more definition to our windows and uh, we can see how they are a bit more defined and on the sides here I've put the glow like and just so that it's uh, it won't spread the vines too far out. 
onto our dark oak windows. And as you can see, I've, I've done a lot of framing with the dark oak and uh, highlighting with that warped stem. And I've even used some of the stripped dark oak into the building itself just to create another element of depth with our color. And the, I really like the dark oak in this because it creates such a color contrast uh, and a texture contrast between the smooth sandstone. So as you can see, the, the dark chocolate with the light of the smooth sandstone is really complementing. And But around here, we've got a whole bunch of different types of the uh, of window options. And obviously, like we can come through and we can change bits and pieces here. This is, uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this particular window. It kind of looks to it like a face to me, but I think a lot of them end up looking like faces anyway. But these are just some different options here we've got a mirroring option which can create just a bit of a different appeal uh, as for our front door I've popped in some of the uh, some of that uh, what's it called the crimson no not the crimson the warped stem stuff here and um, I've brought it out just a little bit and maybe the the staircase could be just a little bit intense here uh, but that's that's okay I'm okay with that uh, around here I've brought in again a different type of window three in a row and um, again with our warped shutters and that just brings a little bit of color and across the top here which is kind of a definition between our first and second story i've used some dark oak slabs now i haven't finished the roof here as you can see what i did was i just kind of put outlines where i needed them for the windows to kind of understand how the roof was going to fit but back to the windows here I, again a wider window with a different type of shutter going on now this is the kind of thing you could have open closed partially open partially closed it's just an example for you guys. You could possibly play around with and uh, look, take your, take your stairs, take your dark oak options and have a look at how it can work for you. This rear entrance, again, something a little bit different. We're blending the dark and the light. And, and uh, I just, as I said, keeping this wall blank. I have a plan for it. We will get to it. I got rid of this uh, this orange wall structure plan that we had in here. We're possibly gonna move the rest. We'll have a look at that a bit later when we get to exteriors. Let's move on to the second story. And as you can see here, we've put on the the uh, the roof trim the roof trim is done and it gives us a really good idea and whilst it's just it's just a frame right now it's given us an idea of where our second story is going to be so i've been able to come through here and be able to put a few more little details for our second story before we start to fill in the roof and as you can see i've got like you know a couple more windows little uh balcony of sorts here balcony here and we've got some variations in our roof and Still keeping this wall blank here. All right, for the roof itself, we're doing a patchwork texture. Patchwork texture is kind of when you're just spamming in the textures. We, we've moved between doing that and doing uh, gradients and whatnot, but we'll come through. I'm gonna start by just using this green terracotta as, uh, as my base in here and try and work out exactly the shape of the roof that I'm going for. And then we'll come through in just a minute and we will get in the rest of those colors that we're wanting. And um, let's put that there, that's a bit better. Now we're gonna have to deal with that, but I've got a trick for that later. All right, we've put the patchwork through and I've done a lot more of the moss block, but I have used that green concrete and the green, the lime terracotta in there just to give us some color variations. We've got a bit of decorating that we're gonna to wanna to do with this one, but let's have a look at how we fix this. And to, to get rid of these ugly designs, uh, the ugly stick throughs, all we need to do is take, just like this, take some of our building materials and just alter the way that we are putting them. And if we're doing it just like this, you can see it hides away all of those uh, roof colors sticking out. Now I've come through, I've decorated the roof. We wanted to use a lot of the uh, the grasses and stuff. The cottage core really suggests overgrown. And when we've got that mossy green roof, having a couple of flowers and bits and pieces on top like this, as well as like your glow lichen, some vines, some grass, some bushes, some, uh, some what are they called ferns it really makes it feel like it's an overgrown roof system yeah you know it, it gives us color but we need to come through and put some vines and bushes down the building now and here we go already we can see just a little bit of work here not much has happened yet but 
if I come over here away from it, you can see just how much of a difference having just those bushes running down the side of the house makes. Now these, these outdoor structures, I think I'm gonna move them. I, I want a general idea of them, but I need to finish my build before I really start my exteriors and the exteriors are going to bring it all together but committing to this right this second where it seemed like a good idea at the start right now it's kind of it, it doesn't work so let's finish putting our bushes all over the build and making it a bit more wild a bit more overgrown and go from there. The bushing, the bushing? Yeah, the bushing, why not? The bushing has been completed. And as you can see with this wall, I've gone with the fully overgrown look. And that's why I didn't want to put any windows because if you if you take a look at Google and you Google Cottage Core, you'll find that most of the time there is a, a generally a wall that is just one big bunch of bush and ivy and growth and such. And I think I need to densen this up a bit. I've put some of the glow like in there just for the de texture differences, vines on the on the building itself kept out. Hang on, let's pop one of these in there. Good. That's yeah, that's it seemed a little hollow there. That's a little better now. But if if look, I could touch up this for hours, but it's at the end of the day, I'm really happy with where this is sitting. The bushes have given it some pop. And now we've put in our exteriors and our exteriors is mostly focused on this garden path that's leading to the doors and the idea of a fence. So the idea of a fence means that we don't really need to have a full fence outlining. We just need something that's going to suggest that we have a fence going and then the bushes and the color theme staying all the same in between. Now, having a look here, I could probably have added a little bit more texture, a little more, bit more variance into our ground by adding some coarse dirt and some rooted dirt, and they're not going to turn into grass. But I decided to just keep this nice and plain, uh, just, you know, simple leading up to everything here. And I've built this structure out the back here. Now, I sort of had an idea of this with the orange wool, but if we come through here and have a look, you can see it's not... it. it it could have been a structure. Maybe it was once a structure. It's the idea of a structure. It didn't have to have any particular shape. It's just here for some character. And character is really important when you're building in that cottage core style to give it that cottage core vibe. So just the ideas of what could have been some overgrowth, some light. Now over here, I wanted to show you guys just, this is how I throw together these little bushy areas. It's it's literally just a bit of spam. Make sure that I get some of that color in there, the grass, the bushes, and then, you know, a little bit of short grass because some of these areas, they're not gonna get, uh, not gonna get mowed and so on. Maybe a bit more of an idea of a fence here just to keep us away from that too. Out the back, this is, uh, it's something of a bit of a, a pergola, something like that, I think. Uh, it gives us a, a nice little awning that, you know, come out the front door, there we go. We have this lovely thing that uh, is, it's highlighting all our bushes. It's keeping it off the ground. And back here, a less used path going this way comes around to our, what's probably in here is probably our kitchen. This would probably be our kitchen, might have a kitchen garden out here, but we've also got the well. So it's a nice accessible well for that water in there. And coming back around on our still not overly used path, because we'd more go the other way, back to our entrance point. And there you have it, friends. We have the the surrounding path on our, uh, on our cottage core build that's really it's framing our build along with that idea of a fence. It's kind of giving us that idea of having fencing there. So here's the final product in shaders, all done. I'm really happy with how this has turned out, especially in shaders. The shaders really give it a lot. And if I had the bushy leaves on it, it'd give it just a little bit more character. But you know what, friends? For now, thank you for watching. Do appreciate you being here. Hit that thumbs up if you found something that you could use in this build guide. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and, you know, shout out, comment down below. Let me know what you want to see next. I will catch you all in the next one. See you later, everybody.